This podcast series is supported by members at Patreon. If you want to support this podcast series, head to patreon.com forward slash Cascadian Beer. When learning a new job or skill, why not just jump right in to the deep end? Welcome to the Cascadian Beer Podcast. My name's Aaron and I'm a Cascadian. In this podcast series, I profile the unique breweries of Cascadia, a region that has a strong presence on the international beer scene. Cascadia is a bioregion in the Pacific Northwest and the North American continent. It's made up of the U.S. states of Washington and Oregon, as well as the Canadian province of British Columbia. If you've been enjoying this podcast series, I hope you're subscribed wherever you listen to podcasts. It doesn't cost you anything, and by subscribing, you'll never miss an episode. And while you're there please feel free to share with your friends and leave us a review if you can on the platform. It really helps support this podcast series. Now, normally on this podcast, I highlight a brewery, but this being the 60th episode of this podcast, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to highlight a brewer. Back in 2017, I went to Denver to attend my first Great American Beer Festival. And on my first night there, I went to the Pink Boot Society Rare Beer event. And that's where I met Brewer Cat Wiest. At the time, she was working for a brewery in Santa Cruz, but then she flicked me a note shortly after the festival saying that she landed a job in Oregon. And during my visit to the Oregon coast last November, I thought I'd stop by and catch up with Kat at her new position at the Pelican Brew Pub in Pacific City, Oregon. My name is Kat Wiest, and I am a brewer at Pelican, currently in Tillamook, uh, moving to Pacific City. Which is where we currently are right now, to paint you a word picture here. We're sitting on a log on a beach watching some surfers and... Um, I'm guessing a whale or a porpoise go through the harbor. So I, I think that was a couple of whales. We've got some company. Yeah. You know, this is just not inspiring at all, um, <laughs> <laughs> this location to brew, because right behind us um, is the Pelican Pub where you're moving to soon. Um, so we met, yeah, a year ago, the great, great American beer in Denver. You were down in California at the time, but now you've moved up here. But let's start way at the beginning. How did beer find you? Well, Beer found me originally through an issue of Bitch Magazine. It was, I want to say, the November edition in 2011 with an article titled, We're Here, Where Beer, Get Used to It. And it was about women in the beer industry, not even the beer industry so much, but uh, the history of women being the ancient brewers and kind of the keepers of the sacred beverage and yeah. how the industrial revolution kind of changed that. Mm -hmm. and it changed a lot of things. That <laughs> Yes, it was kind of a big deal. <laughs> kind of a big deal. Yeah. I was unemployed at the time, kind of desperately and depressedly unemployed. And I was inspired by just the idea that I could make beer and be doing something useful and have something to do with my time. Uh, my husband had a bunch of home brewing equipment, so I just busted it out and figured if I can't provide any income for us, then I will at least make sure that we have a good buzz on while we're trying to figure out how to make things work. Yeah, I know. You need something to wind down with at exactly. the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started, um, I just started home brewing several batches a week. I just did, literally didn't have anything else to do. And a few months went by and I was just applying for every single job on Craigslist that came up and a job at a brewery came up and I applied for it and was like, well, you know, what, what the hell? I'm kind of doing this. I've got industrial experience and they hired me and I, I really just couldn't believe it. Then that was it. So how was first day? <laughs> the first day was incredibly stressful. The first real day, you know, the first 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 day was you know six hours of safety hey, videos nice you. And, you know yeah. like how not to drive a forklift that sort of thing yeah yeah don't jump into the fermenter <laughs> yeah. yeah it was a production brewery we uh, at the time were producing a little over 160,000 barrels a year mm -hmm. and I didn't have any experience whatsoever I didn't understand how the pumps work I didn't some of the valves even was just like okay how does oh, it's embarrassing in hindsight, but I, that's how that's that is what it was. But we do need to learn somewhere, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. So the first week, I just thought I'm never I 
I don't even have the full scope of what I don't know. And I never, ever going to get this. And after a few months, I, I got it. And you know, I took some advice from my husband, who's an engineer, and I, I drew the things that I was working on. I, you know, traced the lines and drew schematics just so I could understand mm -hmm. how things were working. And that, that was a really busy brewery. I've never worked anywhere that crazy since. So in a way it was a good way to learn because mm -hmm. it's never, never been that hard. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't have time to think it's, you just do. <laughs> yeah. We're sitting in uh, Pacific city. So how did you end up here? How did I end up here? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was, after a couple of different brewery jobs, my most recent last job was at Seabright Brewery in Santa Cruz, a small brew pub where I was the head brewer. And that's how we met because that, you, you were up in uh, Denver. So Yes. Yeah. I kind of was the brewer and the salesperson and the marketing person and the mm -hmm. social media man. So I was always the one doing mm -hmm. all of the things, which I did enjoy, but it was very stressful and um, it was really burning me out. So I was looking for other opportunities. And the way that I met Pelican was actually at the Great American Beer Festival. And it, it happened pretty organically. I was talking to Corin, who's the R&D brewer at the pub in Cannon Beach, just about a beer that he was working on. And I was like, oh, you work for Pelican. That's so cool. You know, my husband used to love that beer. We don't get it in California, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then out over just uh, several conversations, we kind of ended up saying, well, if you're interested in coming up, you know, maybe we could do an interview. And I was like, hmm. oddly enough, I was looking to relocate and I had a very, very, very short list of acceptable places to live. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was San Diego. One of them was Long Beach. And the third one was the Oregon coast. Right. So here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. Yeah. So Pelican, I mean, a quick, quick background on them. What, what's the history that uh, that is behind Pelican here? Because it's quite a big operation here on the coast. Well, the brew pub that we're sitting in front of opened in 1996. And uh, Darren Welch, our current brewmaster, was kind of just the man operating this place for years and years and years. And production ramped up to a point that he couldn't... Obviously, imagine what you see brand-wise out and about. It's definitely not all coming from here. No, so no. our production facility in Tillamook opened in 2013 and almost immediately doubled in size. And it, since I've been with the company in February, we've brought in, I want to say, five new tanks and we're putting in a canning line. And wow. Still going. Yeah. Still going. Yeah. And uh, we just acquired more space in that facility. A Cannon Beach pub opened, I want to say, in 2016. Okay. It was before I was with the company, so yeah. that may not be accurate. Mm -hmm. But fairly recent. So. Fairly recently. Fairly recent. Okay. And so when you were down in uh, Santa Cruz, um, you weren't just working for the brewery. Um, you were also um, active in the Pink Boot Society, which you're still doing up here, correct? Yes. So, yeah. So uh, how did you get involved with the Pink Boot Society, really? I got involved with the Pink Boot Society pretty much the minute that I heard of it. Mm -hmm. When I had that first job at the production brewery in Berkeley, uh, somebody mentioned, hey, there's an organization for women. And I thought, oh, well, that's cool. I want to be a part of that. And I didn't, I didn't really know how to get involved. So I signed up and I became a member. But it took about a year and a half or so before like my real involvement started because I just didn't know who to reach out to. As an organization, we have developed so much. Uh, we're reaching out to people and saying, hey, this is what we're doing. Come be part of it. I have recently been elected as a board member, effective in January. I'll be taking over our communications and social media, which is uh, terrifying and exciting. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Portland's chapter is really the only active chapter in Oregon, and we're hoping to recruit more numbers. You know, Portland is a huge beer scene and there are a lot of women that are working in it who have a lot to offer all the other women working in it. And we're hoping to get things rolling and maybe start a mentorship program. So like, what is the whole mission behind the Pink Boots Society then? Um, other than just recognizing women in the brewing industry, are there other resources that people can utilize? Right. Uh, so the Pink Boots Society is a networking and educational network for women who earn their income based on the beer industry. And our mission is to assist, inspire, and educate each other. Uh, we offer several scholarships 
uh, when I first became a member, it was, I think, a couple of scholarships a year. Now we're doing dozens of scholarships a year. We're sending, I think this year we sent 10 girls to Germany. Right. Maybe it was eight, but a lot. I mean, it's not a cheap trip. It's not a cheap trip. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, We have been partnered with YCH. Last year, YCH did a very generous sponsorship deal with us where they let us create our own hop blend that would be commercially available. And then they donate like $3 a pound from everything sold to Pink Boot Society. And we've got that going again this year. We're hoping to, Mm -hmm. hoping to sell even more. And so that Hopland was, um, that's part of like the Pink Brutes brew day, right? That, yes. that happens. But to be clear, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. If you're a commercial brewer and you're interested in supporting the Pink Boot Society, you can order these hops from YCH. They'll still donate us the money and then you can use it however you see fit. Right. But we do have Big Boots Brew Day coming up in March and that's our biggest fundraiser all year. We basically say, hey, get as many brew teams together as you can, brew this awesome beer, make Mm -hmm. it whatever you want, Mm -hmm. use this hot blend, and uh, then we schedule, you know, release parties and tap takeovers, Mm -hmm. and uh, you can really distribute it however it works for your brewery. And it's not just a West Coast thing either. Like the society has chapters all over the world. I saw like Argentina recently started a chapter too. So like, yeah. Uh, We... don't know how I can't, I don't want to say how many countries we're in because I'll probably get the number wrong. But mm-hmm. uh, we have now Taiwan and Hong Kong. We have Peru and Argentina, Norway, Germany, Australia has a large presence, and so we're we're really everywhere. Right. <laughs> so uh, we're we're up here now. Um, you were doing some pretty experimental things. I mean, you could because you were in a brew pub in Santa Cruz. Um, so what's the kind of day to day and have you, do you have much influence in terms of new styles of beers that are coming on, um, so far at Pelican or is that going to be more so when, once you move down to the brew pub, you think? That'll be happening more so when I, when I move down to the brew pub, I have been working on a recipe now, but it's, it's for our Pink Boots collaboration brew day. Uh, it seems a little early to get that recipe together, but we do need to order the hops. So, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, might as well be prepared. Never too early to start planning. Yep. Well, get that hops order in before it disappears too. Right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. December yeah. 3rd is the cutoff for yeah. the pre-order. And they're, they said they'd have some available for spot, but definitely don't want to no. get caught high and dry on that no, one. No, no. Especially when it's a key ingredient. In the- <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But as far as experimentation goes, what I'm kind of I need to feel out because it hasn't. I haven't started this new role yet. It will be different than it was at my previous brew pub because there was really no oversight, for better or for worse. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't really matter what I made so long as I made something and it was on tap. And, you know, that was great, but also pretty stressful. So I will be working under, you know, Darren Welch, who's been the brewmaster here forever and if you walk through this pub, you'll see, you know, hundreds of awards on the wall. So he, you know, really knows what he's doing. And I will be given more guidance, which will definitely help me develop as a brewer. Mm-hmm. So in terms of the beer styles, what do you like to brew in general? Like, oh, if, if, goodness. If you're just How like, much time do we have? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> I, well, until your shift starts. But yeah, but. <laughs> I love writing recipes for red ales. Right. I don't always love drinking red ales because they, there aren't really a whole lot of them out there that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. But it's one of my favorite recipes to design because there is so much complexity that can happen in that green bill and with the hops. And I have some favorite ingredients that I love for reds and some things that I can taste in reds that I'm like, I don't, I, I would never use that. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. So what is what is your ideal red ale like? What is the, the the cat winning red ale? Oh, for cat you? winning red ale is going to be bright ruby red, crystal clear, just a brilliant deep red that looks like the sunset when it's just about to be completely gone. Yeah, it's going to be very dry. There aren't going to be any burnt sugar or toffee notes, and it will be a little bit more bitter than you know your typical Irish red. Okay, so like kind of like a hybrid ESB kind of thing or, kind of yeah and i'm hesitant to say red ipa because i i just no because you say that they always it, kind it, of fail me yeah it's little. like a hot bomb and, it, exactly yeah yeah, yeah, yeah there has to be balance there between the bitterness and the malt and but a little bit more on the bitterness side okay all yeah right, all right <laughs> so if uh, somebody was wanting to get into brewing um what would be some advice um that you could give them given <laughs> your crash course in history here 
well, apply for jobs. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of times people will see something and say, oh, well, you know, I don't have the experience or I'm not qualified for that. Mm -hmm. Just apply for it I, and see where that goes. Uh, if you are a woman and you're interested in getting into brewing, there is a student membership program with the Pink Boot Society. Mm -hmm. um, if you feel like you're not sure whether or not beer is for you, I guess just take a brewery tour and check out the check out the culture yeah uh, not all breweries are created equal some nope. people are really happy with their jobs and other people are you know kicking buckets across the cellar so yeah. Yeah. definitely definitely be aware like of where you're job, going though, right? that's yeah. true yeah <laughs> yeah and uh you still homebrew or i do not no no and when i when i got my very first professional brewing job, I asked the guys that I worked with, so you guys must do a lot of home brewing. Mm -hmm. And they were all like, oh, no. Yeah. And I thought, that's so sad. I, that, I'm never going to, I'm never going to let this go. And it really took about six weeks. And I just thought I've worked 50 hours, 60 hours. I'm so tired. I do not want to make beer. I want to go to the beach and take a nap. Yeah. The carpenter's home's never finished, right? Yeah, so. Right. <laughs> I gave all my home brewing equipment to my dad and I'm trying to talk him into retiring. And, okay. you know, I think that'll be a really great hobby for him. He's a welder, so he can design himself a really nice system. Yeah. I, I can imagine like a really nice wheeled out, yeah, the whole thing. All right. What are, what has been some of the benefits if somebody was to come down to the uh, Oregon coast here and uh, check out the Pelican Brew Pub? What are some added benefits of attractions that you've discovered in your year here so far? Well, I was warned before moving here that there wasn't anything to do. And I don't necessarily agree with that because this is, I we're, mean, we're what, what we're doing beach. right now is we're <laughs> sitting on a log staring at the ocean and I can do this all afternoon. Yeah. There are some really epic hikes around here. Cape Lookout is the, actually that's Cape Kawanda right there. The next Cape over is Cape Lookout. And that's one of my favorite places to go. It's also a state park. The beach has a waterfall. There's a huge spit. I can go for a run down that. I can run halfway down it and say I'm tired of running and then just like walk an hour back and that's fine too. When you get to the end of that and you look down, the water is so deep there. Sometimes you're looking directly down onto the back of a whale. It's just, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. That sounds pretty awesome. Right. Well, thank you so much. It's uh, great to see you again. Yeah, just so happy that you get to brew an amazing space like this. I mean, you know, I was really happy at Seabright because my brewery was only three blocks from the ocean. Oh, okay. And I mean, at this pub here, I'm not even going to have to cross the street. Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, the next brewery, if you decide to move, they need to be on a jetty out in the ocean, right? So you can just jump right out. Pretty much. Your house. Yeah. My husband and I have have discussed, you know pipe dream discussions of buying an old ship and uh, turning it into a floating destination brewery in there. international waters because yeah. we want to be pirates too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. Thanks. Big thank you to Kat for her time. Really appreciate it. It was so lovely just sitting on a log <laughs> on the beach, just watching those whales or porpoises or whatever they were in the bay go back and forth. And yeah, it was a, it was a really great time in uh, Pacific City. And since then, she's taken over the position there. And uh, I need to go back and visit and see what beer she's brewing up. So yeah, lots has happened since we had our chat back in November. But I was saving this interview because uh, I thought it was really special and I wanted to highlight it here on a very special number, my 60th episode of this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you've been with me the entire time, thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. If you're relatively new, um, welcome. I hope you're subscribed wherever you listen to podcasts. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this episode. So there we go. I got a few different formats now in the show. And really, I can't thank you enough for your support. Um, coming up to four years now on this production. So yeah, uh, I've done a lot of exciting things this year so far, and I have a lot of things in the pipeline for the rest of the year, and I really can't thank you enough and uh, everybody else that supported the show, so really do appreciate it. If you want to support the show, you can by going to Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Cascadian Beer. If you want to follow us on social media, you can. We're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cascadian Beer, Twitter at Cascadian Beer, and we're on Instagram at Cascadian Beer Podcast. To check out previous episodes and to check out some extra photos and extra show notes, you can go to the website cascadian.beer. My name's Aaron, and thank you so much again for listening. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, remember, support your local.